Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another... I started off about doing about Scotland, and I immediately almost break out into me a uh, very uh, Irish accent. It's... I apologize... Oh, God damn it. At least I kind of got the colour scheme right. I know it says Budapest on it, and I do apologise. Um, but anyway... We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and here's a very interesting part about today's video about, obviously, about doing about uh, Scotland's national anthem, O Flower Scotland. I did have it in mind to release this on St. Andrew's Day, patron saint of Scotland, because, okay, I'm going to do this. If you're interested about what I think about uh, the, your nas the, the national anthem of Scotland, that's like... All of that is going to be the first part of this video. The second part of this video is going to delve in a bit of more autobiographical takes. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I will keep it short, but I'll get straight to the point. And it's it's certainly one of the things that you feel, certainly in this household anyway, is the... Uh, aside from uh, my spider, Lennon, who just uh, sits there on the wall all day long, is, uh, you know, the... The, the 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 feeling of this house of the the coat of Scotland and of Scotch things like name like Gordon Ramsay, uh, uh, Carlisle, Creasy, Robert Louis Stevenson, Robert the Bruce, bagpipes, haggis. There's I mean the language and also let's let's be, let's face it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll just say this just before we get started. Even with somebody with an Irish heritage. And I'm not joking about this, ladies and gentlemen. The Scottish are the best bunch of swearers in the world. I, and this is from someone with Irish uh, background, Irish blood. The Scottish swear like no other nation in the world. They, it is, an, it, it, I, I reckon you should get a, you should study university in swearing in Scotland or in, in Edinburgh or Glasgow. But that's not why we're here. This is why we're here. So. O Flower of Scotland, please stand for the Scottish National Anthem.
beautiful that ladies and gentlemen absolutely be and you can even see right here scotland the brave by the mass band of the march on 2019 and that's it, it does bring me what it's something i really want to say about a traditional scottish garb for one second now the last time i ever went to scott went to scotland or specifically edinburgh was about 16 years ago and as time's gone on, I must admit, if I ever do want to go back go back to Scotland for any which reason, I kind of almost wanted to A, be for a very formal occasion, mostly because I actually kind of do want to wear a kilt. And yeah, I, I, I must admit, I genuinely do want to wear a kilt. I want to sort of just to just I think I, I kind of just want to like take part in it all. I feel like there's something very, very dignified about being dressing up as smart uh, as someone required to wear a kilt because i can only imagine in very thick uh, dark uh, d dinner jackets uh, white shirts uh, bows and uh, 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 plaited uh, green and blue with white striped uh, kilts there's something very it's it's not so much that it's a it, it's sort of like a represent a representative figure of the scottish uh, uh, kilts, white socks, uh, sort of some sort of like I don't know what what the right word is. Some sort of like sash uh, starting at the shoulder going down, and with uh, fiery uh, ginger hair. I, I I think it's a bit more of a, a stereotypical uh, representation of the Scottish, but there's something curiously very very representative and very very noble about the image. It's not so much because it's the first thing you imagine, but because of almost what it would represent. I mean, that's just like the image of a Scot of a Scotchman. But what about what's in his background? Maybe he's standing in a field in Inverness. Maybe there's roaring clouds behind him. Maybe he is standing in front of a bunch of people. It's it, it, it for me. It's sort of like a figure of um of a man who is noble doer grim but he gets the job done he is he is he is almost in his like a, a, a very in in his own natural habitat if that's the right word to use not because uh, everything he wears is representative of where he's from but because it's representative because it looks good to be to, to remember where you come from. That's not to say that there isn't really like a characteristic uh, garb or fashion in all parts of the world, but I think when it comes to Scotland, well, when it comes to Scotland in general, is the very next thing I was going to mention, and that is the, ac the, the accents. A Scotch accent is, I think, renowned in how... It's, it's not so much it's humorous, but it's also, it's a, I think it's a better version of the English accent. I think it's dour and grim, but it has enough charm in it. And that's the thing that kind of like the English accent doesn't really have nowadays. There is a great charm about the Scottish. And maybe that's again the whole thing about the fashion garb and what I was trying to get at earlier. There's something charming and something very representative even somebody who, like a, a Scottish colonel, for example, you know, he may he may have like a, a, a mustache, like the wings of an eagle, and he may just stand there with like, sort of think of it like the, the dad in How to Train Your Dragon, a brute perhaps, but a very handsome sort of brute, and Rob, Rob uh, Robert the Brute, for example, and I know it's Robert the Bruce, but. For the sake of this sort of ironical pun, I think it's a quite good one to say. And then, of course, there's the actual lyrics, which aren't actually in uh, the in the national anthem itself. But to be honest, it sounds like something that probably Robert Burns probably would have wrote as well. O oh, flower of Scotland, when will we see your like again? That fought and died for your wee bit hill and glen, and stood against him, proud Edward's army, and sent him homeward to think again. The hills are bare now, and autumn leaves lie thick and still. Our land that is lost now, 
which these so dearly held, and stood against him, proud Edward's army, and sent him homeward to think again. Those days are past now, and in the past thy, they must remain, but we can still rise now, and be the nation again, that stood against him, proud Edward's army, and sent him homeward to think again. <laughs> Tay think again seems to be actually very, very profound. It is about we will think again and we will rise again and we will be triumphant once again. It is about being gracious in defeat, but being triumphant in victory. Which there's something, again, curiously very, very special about that. It's a very it's a very humble sort of uh, national anthem and that's the sort of thing I really really appreciate because it's such a it it it's it's such a characteristic I uh, again inf infliction upon the Scottish that they dress that they dress doer respectable there's charm in them but there's also the feeling deep down that they are people to do something special. And it's, again, in something like this, where it makes you realize that the, the, the message is almost as, as clear as day. Life is not always great. There are some bad things that happen in this world, bad things that happen to all of us. Some of us may not get the chance that so others dearly held that stood against him, Proud Edward's army. Now, if I had to uh, take a guess, Proud Edward's, is this, that possibly might be Edward IV? Because I don't, because Edward was, uh, Edward IV, I should say, was renowned as a very warlike monarch who had an exceptionally quite short reign as uh, King of England. But I don't necessarily believe it would be in reference to Edward V or VI, because even though Edward VI succeeded... Uh, Henry VIII, it was he. D he didn't exactly have a very short, uh, long reign. I, I think Edward VI was about three years, and then, uh, then after Mary the First and Elizabeth, then uh, King James the Sixth of Scotland came down, came down and became King James the First of England, and began the reign of the Stuarts. And also, among other things, King James the First of England was renowned as the wisest fool in Christendom. You may want to remember that, ladies and gentlemen. That could be worth a lot in later life. I remember it because it was the uh, it was a, it was a question on who wants to be a millionaire that I was watching last night. Worth one million pounds, by the way. And I literally I, I knew what the answer to the question was immediately, and nobody could give a shit. Typical. Even when the £32,000 came on, which the Reign of Terror is in reference to which uh, revolution? French and, again, I, I knew this before the answers came up and literally no, but I reckon, sorry to get on a bit of a tangent here, I reckon if somebody went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that I knew and rang me up to, ask, uh, to answer the question, they would just not listen to me on purpose. Just my luck. I, I can, of course. I, I don't necessarily expect that sort of thing. I probably won't be even be, be that lucky to be phoned either, to be honest. But back to the matter at hand. Um, I remember when I was in school. And let me just check how much time I got. Um, uh, well, I'll just I'll keep this part short. So, the reason why I wanted to do the uh, the Scottish national anthem early is because I know that Saint Andrew's Day is on the last day of November. But since uh, that actually is kind of a little, it fits in a little bit to all this because usually that's sort of when the winter months truly begin. It's where everywhere gets cold, everywhere gets hard, everything gets dark, and everything is not necessarily the nicest to be in. But it's not about having hair of fire or riding about uh, thinking you're riding in chariots of fire. It's also about how fiery and red and humble you are on the inside. It is about what is in here that's going to keep you warm. Not about how much uh, haggis uh, you, you, you consume 
or how many times you uh, turn your face purple from playing the bagpipes or how many times you literally go to bed at night by first consuming White and McKay uh, blended scotch whiskey. Um, I don't necessarily remember if this is from the Isle of Skye, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, I know fine well there is some that d does come from the Isle of Skye, but let me tell you again, uh, scotch whiskey, ladies and gentlemen, that is the way to go. You're hearing this from somebody again with a, 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 a very profoundly Irish background, but see that triple mature for a smooth, richer taste and won the International Spirits Challenge Award of 2022. See, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you, if, again, on my recommendation, uh, White and McKay's uh, Triple Blended Scotch Whiskey. That's where you want to go. And with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you've enjoyed this reaction video to O Flower Scotland, uh, the Scottish National Anthem. And I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye for now.